Every faith marks the circle of life with age-old rituals and ceremonies. But how are they celebrated and commemorated in a multi-faith modern Britain? In this episode, what does it mean to be a Sikh? Sikh means learner and student. Sikhism is about humanity, about charity, about being compassionate. Just, just being a good person. <laughs> From birth to growing up. <laughs> Marriage, as long as you're with me, everything will be fine. To end of life. It's going to happen to us all. We all must go one day. How do Sikhs across the faith mourn loss and celebrate life? <laughs> what can these personal stories tell us about the universal experiences we all share? This is good, this is good. Being Sikh is to recognize everyone as the same. I'm very proud, very proud of my religion. <laughs> Dinner time, you're the chef. Daddy's the chef, right? No, I'm just a helper. We're about to be a parent uh, for the first time. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a mom, and my husband's always wanted to be a dad. Hmm, I think baby knows that mama is cooking now. <laughs> I remember when she told me that I am pregnant, but I'm not sure. I need to do test tomorrow morning. Literally, I haven't slept for the whole night. I was just waiting for like when she'll wake up, when she'll do the test and uh, I'll get the actual confirmation. <laughs> no worries, baby. We'll give you food. Don't worry. Don't worry. While well, I've been expecting, the midwife told me, talk to baby when baby kicks, react to baby. I think uh, baby's hungry. Baby's them hungry? Out there, yeah, kicking really hard. Really? Yeah. Baby will learn your voice and that you're mom. So whenever baby kicks, then I got into the habit of just putting my hand and pressing down slightly. There, here. There, here. You feel? Yes. Right Guru? Right Guru. Sikhs believe in one God. We call Wai Guru. Wai Guru. Wai Guru. Wai Guru. Va means wondrous and Guru means taking us from darkness to lightness. Wai Guru. I want baby to really connect with God, know who God is and how to communicate with God. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Baby would always kick back as well. <laughs> mm. I turned to my husband and I said, are we ready? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time he was like, you've not been scared the whole pregnancy. And I was like, yeah, but it's like real now. Take your time. There's no need to hurry. <laughs> not long left. Hopefully, we'll get to meet this little one when hold baby in our arms soon. Birth in Sikhi represents entry into a life where it should be easier to connect, remember and focus on your guru. Having Sikhi, it teaches you like humility, compassion, love, friendship, all of these things. We all are creations of the same Lord. He is within us, all of us. So an addition to the family <laughs> is like a blessing. It's not my son. He is a, a gift from Lord. And I have a duty to look after him. We were blessed with a baby boy seven pounds, two ounces, and uh, healthy with God's grace. This was my first child. I don't think you can ever prepare fully for it. And then you started crying. Yeah. <laughs> I was crying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just thanking God for this amazing gift. After birth, Sikhs carry out the first rite of passage, the Namgaran. 
It's a special ceremony where a baby's name is decided. We all got up in the morning. Bye. Bye. I think we all got baby ready before we got ourselves ready. Bye. Putting baby seat outfit on. Okay. The five Ks is the most important. Five Ks are kada, which is a, a iron bangle. Kanga, which is a wooden comb. The kirpan, the the, the sword. Keys. Uh, we never cut our a single hair. Uh, and the kachera, which is a cotton underwear. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, boy. These are the five keys. Symbols, of course, Sikh principles that act as a uniform by which Sikhs are bound together in faith and can be identified. Good boy, see? Uh, All five have to be worn by initiated Sikhs who have dedicated their life to a pure form of living and serving others. It's a privilege to be able to wear the five keys, to have the identity on the outside, but also live by the amazing values and the morals that we are taught, like love and truth. The naming ceremony also marks the first physical connection that the baby has with the divine. It's kind of like a milestone, you know, like you get milestone cards this, nowadays, like my first tooth, my first hairbrush or my first bath. Like it's such an important day. It was really important to take baby in. Baby physically out of me, in my arms, and bowing down to Guru. I just felt a wave of emotion. That was like baby's first physical connection with Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Containing the teachings of six Gurus, as well as Muslim and Hindu devotees, Guru Granth Sahib is the most revered scripture for Sikhs. It's seen as an eternal living teacher of the Sikh faith, and as a part of tradition, a fan is waved to provide comfort, while serving as a symbol of authority and respect, akin with a living guru. As a spiritual and religious guide, it's used in all major life events, including naming ceremonies, weddings and funerals. There are many different people whose teaching is mentioned in Gurgan Sahib Ji. This guru is not only belongs to six, it is for everyone. The way the Guru Granth Sahib is written, it's either as prose or it's as a poem or it's as hymn so you can sing it. Gitan is the way that we sing these prayers from the Guru Granth Sahib. Because it's the way you communicate with God and have that conversation with God to say, you know what, I've had a really bad day, I'm just going to sing these prayers to you and why Guru, please bless me or guide me or help me. The leader of the congregation stands in front of Guru Granth Sahib, stating the purpose of the ceremony to the scripture. In this case, it was um, Harsimras Gaur and Jigji Singh have brought their baby for the first time to the Gurdwara. Please bless them with a hukam, with a command, so that they can go and name their baby. The Guru Granth Sahib is then opened to a random page by a ceremonial reader and the first verse is read as a response. The first letter of the first word indicates the letter the baby's name has to start with. It is a command or a blessing direct from God. The first letter was Papa Perirara, so then in English that translates to PR. One of the things I was saying to the family was, because we live in the UK, we have to think about how well non-Sikhs pronounce that name, because like they really struggle with my name. But when we, I was sat there, I was just holding a little boy, 
and it didn't even cross my mind like how would other people pronounce it or even the spelling. It was just amazing just to sit there and discuss as a family. <laughs> My father uh, from India, he was on a video call, so he suggested a name. Guaranteed. He came up with Prab Simar Singh. Prab means God, Simar means chanting, so chanting God's name. Yeah, so Prab Simar. I think because also he's a son, we've given him the last name Singh, um, which means like prince or lion. To reject inequality, caste and status discrimination, every Sikh boy must take the surname Singh, meaning lion, and every Sikh girl must take the surname Kaur, meaning princess. Everyone automatically was like, yeah, that sounds right. Like, it just felt right. We asked the baby, like, how does he like the name Brub Simmer Singh? Brub Simmer Singh? He kind of like had a cry or an expression or basically responded. <laughs> so we just took that as a yes. <laughs> to have that as the starting point of your life outside of the hospital is pretty important. Not only just for him, but for us. You know, it's not just parents that raises a child, right? It's the whole family. So it was really important for us just to get together and I guess just set the path right. Yeah. Mm. Growing up a Sikh in Britain is probably all down to being guided by those Sikh ethics, those Sikh principles, those philosophies that were instilled in me through the way that I was raised, not only by my parents, but also by the family and people that I had around me. If you have the right environment, you're blessed with the ability to think. And when you can learn to think for yourself, for me, that's coming of age. In Sikhi, coming of age is, in essence, signifying a certain sense of responsibility. If you have the Guru at the center of what you're doing, what you're believing, what you're practicing, then it can happen straight away or it can take a lifetime. <laughs> oh, this, this is good, this is good. <laughs> Ah, and she looked like a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> what were you feeling right now as you watched excitement. the video? What was, what excitement was and a little bit of anxiety. My name's Anj Singh and I'm 16 years old. I've been wearing my turban for about five years now. But you don't look anxious. No, I don't look anxious. <laughs> as a child, Anj was like any other child, happy, you know, having fun. And then as he came of age, obviously children think about their identity and their religion. The Star Bandi is a ceremony in which a young Sikh first commits to the responsibility of wearing a turban. They start wearing the turban between 12 to 16 years of age. My dad was the biggest inspiration because he wore a turban every day. He looked quite happy in it uh, and I wanted to feel the same. The Anj looks so happy. <laughs> I was happy. You know, it feels like a long time ago. It does, right? yeah. The turban is a symbol which you cannot hide and therefore the star bandi is an important part of being a Sikh. A Sikh and believes in free will, so this is our choice to do this. It's usually tied by a respected elder in front of the Guru Granth Sahib. Having my Starbandi done in India was spiritually closer than having it done here. It's like you go back to your roots where the Sikhism originated. <laughs> When the Guru Granth Sahib Ji was being read, 
It felt personal, personal to me. This is going to shape my life. When I returned, then I truly did feel different. I felt a lot more calm, a lot more sensible, a lot more controlled, rather than the hyperactive mess that I was before. <laughs> Anj uh, wearing his dastar is a very proud moment, very proud sight for us. Wearing turban is... It's part of the Sikh values. It's a symbol and it's an icon of Sikhism and everything it stands for. To be a Sikh, it's standing up for egalitarianism. It's standing up for equality. He's standing up for defense of the weak and the vulnerable. It's a sense of just being a good person in general. And that's not just through a religious light, that's through a sense of duty to your community. As soon as I put on my turban, I feel like I'm in the uniform. I'm in the uniform that we as Sikhs wear to perform their duty. It's like work shoes. Putting them on makes you work a lot harder than uh, working at home in, be in bare feet. All followers of the Sikh faith wore a turban both men and women, to show that all are equal. The beauty of Sikhi is it's based on equality. So it doesn't matter what your gender is or your sex is or your race is or your wealth status. It doesn't matter, like, you are all equal. doesn't matter if you're male or female. Whatever the rules are or the guidance is or the commands are, it's applicable to both men and women. And that's the beauty of our outward uniform as well, I guess. That the star is both there for men and women of all ages, and it just gives you that self confidence, that gravitas. I tried to copy my dad's the star. It suits him down to a T. Like he just looks amazing. I, I don't look that sexy. Like <laughs> I genuinely don't. That's not fair. Um, but then, <laughs> as cheesy as it sounds, wearing this, I feel that same level of confidence and freedom. That's that, and that's the most important thing. Freedom of not actually caring about what people think I am or what I look like. It's just like, I'm happy. And I think that's quite important. But that's only been recently, about, what, four years, I would say. So, it takes time. What we know about the gurus is, is through the way they behaved. They practice like a householder's life. You work, you know, you have a family and you care about the environment, but you also care about the people that live in this world and part of living in this world is is having somebody that you are partnered with and that you live with and that you experience life together it's strange being back here now it's like we've gone full circle yeah, it's crazy to think it's this just, time two years ago. Yeah, we were strangers then, but we also weren't. Yeah. And now it's just like we're here. I'm married. I'm married. That's Going good. through this journey together in that way. Yeah. It's like, it's like it was our hook'em. Mm. You feel married. I don't know what that's supposed to feel yeah, like, to I be know. honest. <laughs> We met at a conference put on by the Sikh Education Council, which is the coolest but weirdest, most random, geeky thing ever. And I just remember this person being there in like these tiny little shorts, and I was thinking, that's a brave choice. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, she kindly offered me a lift back home. 
we spent the whole journey just talking about life in a way that like I've never really talked about life to anyone before. And it was weird because like he was a complete stranger, but also so familiar. All I realized was when I want my partner, it's, it's going to be way beyond the way they look, what they earn, anything like that. To me it was, can I sit with that person and have a conversation that is full of meaning? It was fundamental that the person that I was going to spend my life with had the same love of Siki that I have because it is a huge part of every single element in my life. You okay? Mm-hmm. You? Mm-hmm. We're both big believers of Hookham, yeah. which is kind of like this idea that everything is supposed to happen how, it's, how it happens. Yeah. I'd always wanted to get married at home in the garden, and that's exactly what happened. Bright blue skies, bright green grass. Everything that you would imagine. The important thing for me was making sure family was with us, so we kept it quite intimate. <laughs> we decided that we wanted to walk in together. Yeah. A lot of people now do it so that the groom is already sat waiting and then the bride kind of walks in as though it's, a, it's like an aisle almost. But mm. we made a really conscious decision that we were making this commitment together, so we wanted to walk in together. The Guru Granth Sahib Ji was placed in the middle of the room, so no matter where you were in that room, that's where you looked. Yeah. And that's where your focus was. And we had the Kirtan on in the background. And it was loosely interpreted as like, as long as you're with me, everything will be fine. Kirtan is what gives you that emotion. Yeah, it helps you focus on the Guru yeah. because it's music and it's in a way that helps like your mind connect. Mm -hmm. So, Pali di Rasambi Satguji di Bakshitwara Nirviganta Seta Sampurana Kui Hai. The Anand Garaj, meaning blissful union, begins with the bride's father taking one end of a traditional shawl and passing it to his daughter to hold, signifying their physical union. The way we did it was that my dad and my grandma both did it together as like a sign of respect because she's the elder in my family. I've grown up with like these, excuse the French, but like badass women. So it was kind of a nice way of breaking the tradition that it's like the father giving the bride away. The groom leads the bride as they walk around the Guru Granth Sahib to the singing of specific verses. Four times at set intervals and bowing at the beginning and end of each round. In what is known as Lama, or Union of the Souls, and it forms the main part of the sacred marriage ceremony. Those circumambulations represents the beginning of this journey and the beginning of this commitment that these two people, the two of us, were making together with the Guru. The best way to put it is like we have each other's backs. <laughs> yeah. The very essence of Sikhi is oneness. So, as two human beings, mm. we are now helping each other to realize our path as yeah. best we can. No, it's beautiful like how that works. Even if I want to see you as separate, 
I really can't like and that's what's really important there yeah. and what we have to do now is just literally help each other along the way because we're going to fall over so much mm -hmm. right it's not a case of that's it we've made it <laughs> in that way it's yeah, this case is not of, the end this exactly. is the beginning after that's happened and Ardas is done which is really important prayer and a hukum nama is taken yeah. and that sort of signifies the end of the Anandgaraj ceremony the Hukam Nama is a verse from the Guru Granth Sahib chosen at random. It will act as a piece of advice from the Divine to the newlyweds, helping to guide them on this journey of marriage for the rest of their lives. The man who night and day utters the Lord's name ever remains wakeful. He who enters the Lord's asylum, O Nanak, remains merged in the bliss of the nectar of his love. Wow. Deep. That sums up what we're trying to do. You know, like you get those t-shirts, keep calm. Yeah. It's quite reassuring to know, like, if you ever feel any moment of doubt <coughs> that this is what you should look back on. For the rest of our lives. Yeah. How does it feel being married? It's nice that I have that support in that way of you now. I know that I'm not technically alone that you've got someone you can share your thoughts with and really like rely grow on. and yeah and rely mm -hmm. on yeah I think that's quite important yeah love is really important love for each other love for your family your friends even love for your enemies you can disagree with someone to your heart's content but you have to still love and respect and kind of agree to disagree but also love for animals and plants and wider than that, compassion for every soul on earth. As a Sikh, we believe that when we are married to someone, we are making a promise in front of our Guru that we are going to be together for the whole life. We'll always support our partner. We are not even physically together. We are spiritually now soulmates. It's like one soul in two bodies. Sikhism says that there is only one soulmate you can have in your life. So it's only one person you get married to and that is your life partner till death. In all religions, funerals are quite a taboo subject. People don't really like to talk about death. But sometimes something comes to you and it's just meant to be. I think it just came to me and it was meant to be. I didn't think years ago I would be a funeral director, but I'm very honored and blessed to be doing it because it's a seva, which is giving back to the community. At the passing of a loved one, Sikhs carry out the Untam Sanskar, meaning final rites, starting with ritual bathing and dressing. The day before the funeral, or sometimes a few hours beforehand, you wash and dress your loved one. If it was a dad and the brothers or the uncles would come down, if it was a, a mum, the sisters and the daughters would do it. Going back to tradition in India, didn't really have soap, so they use yogurt. So, so we've kept that tradition here. We use yogurt to wash the body down. And we use mustard oil. Then we dress the loved one. They will always have their five Ks with them. The Gara, Ganga, Kacha, Karban, and Ges. And we dress them because at the end of the day, the person's gone, the soul's gone. And that's just a vessel that they came in, but you still want them to look pretty, it's a celebration. Amrik Singh Semi came to this country many, many years ago from Africa. He was such a pillar in that community. He was a great dad, he was a great friend. He taught me a lot, how to be in with myself, how to attain peacefulness in my mind, 
I'm really proud that I've had my father in my life. For Sikhs, death signifies the souls moved on. We cremate because we don't want to keep the body with us because our loved one is no longer here. So we put them back into the earth through the ashes. It's teaching us to move on, but it's easier said than done. On the day of funeral, I did a speech. He always had a smile on his face. It, it was the way I wanted to connect with him and say my final goodbyes to him. So, yeah. I was the one who pressed the button for my dad's coffin to go down to the incinerator. I had to do it. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't bear the sight, to be honest. I couldn't bear to see my mother and my family crying. When the coffee went down and that was the hardest bit. I knew I wasn't going to see him again. And when that happened, my world just shattered. And that's it. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. We all come from the same Lord and we merge into the same Lord at death. So we, we don't sort of die, we pass on. And that's pretty much it. Like, it's that simple. It's, it's, it's not the end. It's just the completion of this stage. I know that when those people that are closest to me are no longer in this world, I will find that really hard. But I know that I have the support of my guru to get through that. We learn as a Sikh, when you're born, God or Maharaj already gives you basically how many breaths that you're allowed to take or how many breaths you will take in this life. Sikhism don't believe in burials because they think that once a person's gone, they've gone. And you shouldn't have to go back to, back to a place and think they're still there. They moved on to a better life. So the ashes are scattered in water. So they flow into Mother Earth. Jo bolis ho ne hal, sasre kal. Vahe guru, vahe guru, vahe guru, vahe guru, vahe guru. Once the soul has left the body, realistically, you and I, we we do not really know that answer. Um, but within our Sikh belief, we believe in karma, which we all know is karma. Sikhs believe in reincarnation based on the concept of karma. Wahiguru, wahiguru. How a person lives this life will determine how they reincarnate in the next. Wahiguru. You might come back as a, you've come back as a human this life, next life you might come back as an ant. Wahiguru, wahiguru. We believe to be reincarnated into a human being is a blessing. I don't know what I did in my past life that I'm here as, as this form in this life, um, but I know that if I ever want to be the honoured one that can finish all this and go back to God, I've got a long, long way to go. Sardar Amrik Singh Sambi De Astanu Jal Prava Karandi Agya Bakshish Karo Akhar Vada Kata Pulichuk Muaf Karni He was not interested in money. He wasn't interested in clothes. <laughs> to put it bluntly, he wasn't even interested in food. He was a highly spiritual person. He used to say, nobody on this earth is your friend. It's all temporary, it's all dream. The only friend that you have is the one, Lord. Why Guru? Why Guru is your Lord? Pray. Be a good human being. Just before the ashes are scattered, a ceremonial reader carries out a set prayer known as Ardas. 
asking for peace and blessings for the soul which has departed, whilst requesting comfort for the people it has left behind. When the ashes were handed over to me, the things that were going in my mind is, is this my father? My dad's in there. And I said, he doesn't even weigh five kg. It was like, is this what my dad's reduced to? This box, this tube, this cylinder. Do I have to put him in the river? I don't feel like letting go of him. I want to keep it, you know, but I had to do it. When I let go of the ashes, the river when they flowed, it just hit me. It was like, it was a pain, emotional pain. I don't wish anybody to go through it, but it's gonna happen to us all. We all must go one day. But then, I remember my dad's words. Eh, dunia mitia, sorry mitia. That means all this world is dust, and he's right. When in human form and we are alive, when God comes out of you, says, at that point, it's all ashes, dust. So when I did pour the ashes into the river. I've just got the faith that he's in the, in, in the right place. He had to be done. I had to send my dad off in a dignified way, respectful way. So I'm proud of that. Well, I hope my dad's proud of me as well. The ultimate goal for the Sikh belief is not to ever come back as a human being again, it's to become one with God. Somebody's told me the soul is like a droplet of water and the sea is God. So that's the ultimate game for every Sikh that when it comes to time of death, they are at that level where they can actually go back to God. Being Sikh for me is, it's my happiness, it's those days when you just feel kind of eh, it's those days when you're like, this is the best day in the world. Keeping the Guru at the heart of what you do, trying to live a life that is truthful and sovereign. I'm thankful to God every day that I'll be in a Sikh family and I'll follow the path of Sikhism. It is a big, big blessing for me. Being Sikh for me is a privilege. It gives me strength every day to just get up in the morning, learn something new, and give back to society as well. Many people have said it makes them feel different. To me, it makes me feel unique. <laughs> Thank you.